Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Diana Initiative. I am pleased to introduce this session for you. My name is Tina Shakur, and I'd like to first thank our Diamond sponsors today, uh, MongoDB, Microsoft, Verizon, Salesforce, Amazon Information Security, eLearn Security, Intel, and Remediant. Um, please visit them in the Expo Center if you get a chance and thank them for supporting us and making sure that uh, we can bring you this today. Our next speaker is Amelie Corin. She is a senior technology ad advocate at Splunk. You may have heard her speak yesterday. And she's focused on helping organizations transform, grow, and secure themselves in the ever-evolving world of technologies and their accompanying challenges, something I think we all uh, need to, to work and know a lot more about, right? So this is DevSecOps. It is a team sport. This was pre-recorded, so make sure you do a hard refresh on your screen to get the uh, video to start rolling. And with that, let's go ahead and get going. Hello, my name is Amelie Coran, and I'm here to present on DevSecOps. I view this as not a singular activity, but an activity that involves many interdisciplinary teams, individuals, and other resources. This is not a solo genius collection of tasks. Plus, it can be much more fun and informative with teams, especially when you realize this work can be gamified, trust building, and a rewarding activity. Here are some mandatory forward-looking statements. Anything I say today is not intended to discuss any company's strategy or direction, merely today on team building and management for DevOps and DevSecOps. Again, I'm Amelie Cran, and I work at Splunk as a technology advocate. In short, I'm paid to tell stories. Prior to Splunk, I spent 10 years in the federal government in various technology roles in several agencies. Along the way, I also worked in academia and multiple parts of the commercial sector, including several Fortune 150 companies. I've sort of had all the roles I will be speaking about today, so hopefully the perspectives I bring will resonate no matter which role you, yourself, find yourself in or work you are involved in. DevSecOps derives its own name from being an amalgamation of formerly three separate common teams within most IT organizations, development, security, and operations. With the onslaught of new technologies and methods to build, deploy, and secure such solutions, it's become paramount to unite and streamline these traditionally separate activities. This doesn't come without its own set of challenges, from turf wars to knowledge and abilities, with most of the effort trying to wet up the right puzzle pieces to ensure overall team successes. There's also no success in the area given to a group of rock stars or prima donnas, but more from the roadies and sidemen, who work to make sure that the whole show will be good rather than just try to take center stage. Finding, identifying, and nurturing the staff and talent willing to work through the change not only within the IT organization, but are also ambassadors to the rest of the organization to help them through the new ways of exploiting, the new ways of integrating technology into business. The first step is communications, and that is defining how you will talk about your work, ensuring that everybody involved gets it, and can easily share ideas and ensure that nothing or very little is lost in translation. As communication difficulties is one of the top problems in pro project execution and executive and senior leadership, and a degrader of trust within teams. Laying out and defining your expected outcomes. This is not just from within your team, but ensuring your customers. Traditional development and project management followed a classic waterfall process, relying on a critical path, big bang delivery, targeted primarily towards large enterprise, heavy lift projects. Some consider safe or scaled agile framework to wedge waterfall under a new title and call it agile. And it gets adopted by those who are risk adverse and wedded to not changing their ways of working easily. Sometimes it's called agile fall and for those who've seen it fail, maybe agile fail. These missed adoptions can leave an unpleasant taste in people's mouths and less than ideal memories for those who may be asked to move forward towards a DevOps framework. Other times, some who are more willing to just go for it rip the proverbial band-aid off of whatever they have stitched together between the development, security, and operation teams. There are some who will start Greenfield, picking to just move all at once, or slowly integrate DevOps as new projects are onboarded. To make this successful, regardless of the approach, is to develop a good, clear, and documented change management strategy that everybody agrees to and is aware and adheres to. This helps work through not only technical changes and modifications, but will help work through any issues that may arise between non-technical staff, 
business units, and others who won't be interacting with these teams daily or are familiar with these types of methodologies. Your biggest challenge is managing size and the complexity of the work ahead of you. There is no product or service that can you can buy your way out of it. Approaching most large-scale enterprise projects are very ceremonial, even those which are agile framework-based. Lots of having to do something because that's just how it's been done. Very rigid, very structured. A lot of times, these are built-in silos to serve a single or very narrowly focused need, rather than looking broadly across the needs of the entire organization, possibly missing developing shared capabilities because some of the myopathy typically demonstrated from those older models. Building a platform, thinking how it will be maintained and operated, and what it may enable changes, and how teams can think about delivering services and capabilities because it's just based on a known way or method that is supported. A foundational structure from which to build the house, office build, stadium, or cathedral upon. This often provides some modularity, allowing for new capabilities and features to be pulled out or plugged in. Using APIs between services and features is one example of how to enable this capability versus closed and customized applications and services that were tightly integrated and not loosely coupled components. Much like sumo wrestling, it may seem like a very odd and structured activity, but to succeed, the wrestlers need to be balanced and nimble because it's a quick match, rounds lasting only a few seconds until a winner is decided and the goal is achieved. The teams at Facebook popularized an approach to an agile development as to move forward and break things. But what was really become the mantra is to iterate smartly by failing forward. If you are trying something new, ideating and testing out concepts, you will also probably fail often. However, it should be blameless. You're trying something your team and organization probably aren't familiar with in any form and have never ever done. The biggest change in most organizations who followed a waterfall approach is moving from a very linear delivery cycle of features and capabilities to one of small cycles in iterative delivery. There is little to no concept of big bang delivery there, but incremental capabilities until it's finally reaching the quality specified for an MVP or minimal viable product. Along the way in DevOps teams, it is to define how that a system or application will be run and maintained. This is sometimes often another big change for those linear models as they are delivered, and then it's up to everybody to figure out rather than the integration of that thinking in the planning and in the development and release cycles. It is also vitally important for these teams that adopt Agile and DevOps, and eventually DevSecOps, to push for permissionless innovation. Nobody has a lock on good ideas and that by exploring them often and at any time, inspiration may strike and end up solving problems earlier and quicker than a more rigid model. This also has the side benefit of reducing the fear of failure among teams by letting it be okay to fail a little, as long as you learn something from it and share what you've learned. As you move forward towards DevOps, the skills and knowledge among team members will be shared, an opportunity for cross-training, optimizing resources and skill sets. Some that exist in existing teams may be reinforcing and complementary, but they can also highlight some that may be missing during these transitions. Fear often occurs when there's an unknown future or a potential situation that differs from expectations. It's important to ensure that team members understand their roles, responsibilities, and scope of influence, and that it empowers them to do good. Over time, there will be an eventual migration to a shared ownership and responsibility model with skills that be can be interchanged or swarmed when there is an increased need or demand. Everybody scrubs in who can help ensure that things are kept on schedule and that they meet delivery. DevSecOps only works if there's a shared ownership and responsibility model, which is difficult in most organizations where it's easier and common to point fingers and cast blame rather than to own up and work to solve a problem and then move along with a lesson learned. This isn't creating walls, but helping break them down and allow a healthy attitude of asking for help when they need it. Most of you here come with this with a hopefully site grounding or experience with DevOps, or at least a familiarity of the term and the, that what it involves. As you can see, DevOps as a tightly overwrapped Venn diagram with fringes of operations and development activities that exist outside a complete overlay. The progression of this would be of these two areas being separate, but as efficiency and resiliency drives these two roles together, IT is not made up of just these two groups alone. They need to involve and consider security. While Dev and Ops began this transition, they have to be open and transparent, and that then they will build up trust. 
We base it on a healthy relationship from sharing and communicating with one another, and that building is a foundation of a partnership rather than approaching it as adversaries with competing goals and methods. We usually see security as the house and no, the stamp required for development and operation teams to proceed with pushing something live, a gate through which they must pass. It's always been pushed as a painful exercise and the last hop and hoop to go through. This often stated goals for DevSecOps is to be, move security further to the left on the software development life cycle. This, like the Venn diagram, has security now as an overlay, another intersecting sphere and eventually covering more and more of that area, which should reflect more and more of those integrations. This eventually maybe breaks down the house of no, maybe gets to the house of maybe, and possibly to the house of yes. We should, as part of establishing a clear and transparent communication, is to keep it at levels commensurate with your target audience and skills and awareness. If it is possibly too deep, too technical, take the time to help educate if you have the resources to do so. It'll help you refine your messaging, but also raise the skills of those who are working, you are working with. It'll carry over later by reducing the overhead required to communicate. Security, specifically, is seen somewhat mystical and misunderstood specialty, helping to drive that house of no mentality, and by avoiding asking the tough questions or even the very basic ones. Pushing off topics like that, if addressed earlier and willingly, could save time and frustration from all parties. Use this as a teaching opportunity. The ability to cross-train and share knowledge and build more security-aware and skilled people in your organization is vital. As part of the aspects of organization, by their definition, is that they maintain some form of structure. Groups will self-associate based upon goals or skills or some other arbitrary alignment. Those are the creations of swim lanes, areas of expertise to support requested outcomes, but are often rigid with tasks and resources being tossed from one to another. The shared responsibility ends often at the lane markers as teams maintain behaviors that purposefully isolate them from possible adverse blowback and effects but it may also isolate them from being able to share in successes to their fullest. Other organizations are a bit less loosely associated, where it's a free-for-all or this ball pit metaphor used here. While everybody can play in the ball pit, it's chaotic and a little haphazard. It's transparent. Everybody sees everything that's going on, and folks recognize when other needs help, and it's easier to extend it. It will get messy, and the outcome may not be pretty or necessarily what they have carefully planned, like those in a swim lane structure. Regardless of which structure or lack thereof that there is here, some organizations are resistant to change of any kind and may be intractable enough not to want to curb their habits. Those habitual ways of performing businesses, use of technology, or even how they look at their customers, users, and market. You can, if you have the right role, make this fun and not something to dread. Overcoming aversion to risk and change and can be the right catalyst to help create a successful, high-performing team and successful activity. Getting DevSecOps together for your organization will require time and effort. It takes a lot to coagulate, gather and align everything for success. One of the best lessons you can learn or take away from all of this is to pace yourself. It's easy for a team or an organization to be over eager to do everything using DevOps and Agile. And the mantra from modern development methodologies is to fail fast and break things, a la Facebook. But they should also fail forward and learn from those experiences. If you do it too fast and do too much, you lose the feedback loop you get from experience and the ability to integrate into changes and improvements. Taking on way too much at first will also hamper success because the volume, while working the percentages for success, is lower if you start out with a few smaller projects to ensure you and your teams have the process down pat and near muscle memory. Even the greatest athlete or musician or other performer can make mistakes regardless of how much they have done and how often they've done it. So YouTube has plenty of footages of failure videos and blooper reels. But making these mistakes also allows the individual to feel and remember those base emotions and know how good or bad they were to re reinforce this. This will, hopefully, help reduce the severity of failures and enhance the wins. You can never maximize or minimize either as humans drive this, and we are prone to error, as it is human for us to do so. This is a cycle. DevOps and DevSecOps is iterative, as cycles will be, and part of the learning is learning how to recover gracefully from these mistakes. Test for cases, but also observe the points where things may fail. I'm hopefully giving another talk on this shortly on the Dunning-Kruger effect of, for, for individuals, teams, and organizations that tend to overestimate their ability to adopt and adapt to rapidly changing technologies, methodologies, and framework. 
The ego and overconfidence tend to reign supreme either due to market pressures, leadership desires, or the fear of missing out when there is a new trend or a new hotness that they must feel they need to do. This slide covers an organizational behavior that occurs after teams and business units isolate and to put it lightly, get selfish. Probably from the historical operations of an organization, politics, time, and tradition. Behaviors are learned and passed on, some by design and some just by happenstance and need. The ways DevOps and DevSecOps can help is to nurture the good ones and work to dispose of the bad or unwanted ones. One of the first habits, which can be good or bad depending on how it's universally exercised, is communication. Communicating your strategies, plans, goals, and your tie into the business outcomes and mission of your organization, your staff and your DevOps teams help build the trust that is necessary to have a unified vision. This also helps create community and ties into the needs of everybody involved in execution. I say here, fishing for the village, not the boat captain, which is a parable to do the work required to support the entire community and organization rather than just one person, regardless of their role or stature in the organization. An organization will always be more than one person, no matter what it may be perceived or marketed as. Success rides on people, not a person, and working together to common tools, understanding, and a lexicon, and methods are part of the support structure for DevSecOps and DevOps. A referenceable framework acts as the scaffolding needed to handle all this and hand it off. Leadership that is required to make this successful is that which gives themselves to support rather than pull along. While a leader can lay out the path and align the resources and help be the arbiter of choice, the team must follow and leadership must make that appetizing and interesting for folks to follow. The challenge for most technically oriented people are soft skills. We, also, we often revel in our awkwardness and single-mindedness towards achieving goals. This is healthy, but since we are also dealing with breathing live human beings, we need to communicate, often to others outside our own expertise. In the business world, this is talking to folks responsible for various business units, budget, accounting, procurement, acquisition, legal, and HR. They consume various aspects of what an IT organization provides and as a subset, what DevOps and DevSecOps team would generate. Capturing that value at those touch points, but also making sure that that value is collected and shown back is vitally important for quantifying the worth. IT has traditionally been seen as a cost center a utility you pay for for keeping the bits flowing over the network and the spreadsheets from crashing. Selling up innovation and modernization is hard because it's more conceptual than tactile. Let people support you based on faith often, especially if this is something new for your organization. Aligning your work between the business goals and the desired outcome helps tie the value of your work to those business lines. It makes it intimately tied to the core operations of the organization rather than just the support mechanism. Innovation can also assist with re-engineering business processes, which may have become a little messy and convoluted from the original design. ROI, or return on investment, is still a concept often flogged for organizations as the only and overall measure of success. But as not all organizations have a profit motive, the concept of a return on spending resources to recover the investment isn't always a good measure, let alone something that should drive a KPI or key performance index. Use measures that address the outcomes, both qualitative and quantitative, that can be instrumented from the work stream and development life cycles. So you're the first audience publicly seeing these, which are part of my research at Splunk. The ideal destination is the ultimate Venn diagram of overlapping capabilities and functions, with the chewy center of a well-balanced DevSecOps framework, with a little specialized function in areas that may still be under the purview of a single or dual conjoined function, such as DevOps, SecOps, AppSec, and so forth. As an organization matures and teams work closer, build trust, and share responsibility and outcomes, these areas are smaller and smaller. The arrows are affinity arrows, or gravity arrows, which are there to show the balance or out-of-balance forces that can act on a process and relationship. Left, or all the IT silos aligned, this is an all-in organization that has either been born directly into DevSecOps or could quickly shift to get buy into that framework. Strategic and tactical planning to keep things in balance and support work from uh, now on. In the center is the, we have no idea how to work together. The silos are silos, considered the opposite of the all-in persona, but it's actually potentially a beneficial state. Possibly rudderless in where they want to go and how they get there. Um, you know, the influence and successes are possible, and heavy lifts may be required to clean up correct and correct bad habits. 
the lower left are all dev all the time. These are organizations that work and run on the back of developers. They quickly iterate and ideate through product delivery, sometimes at the expense of well-documented and resilience and secure methodologies for service and solution delivery. How to run it is seen as secondary to getting it out the door and into customer hands. The lower right, or Fortress Enterprise, or very minimal new operations and development, is an organization that works in a low trust model, both internally and externally. They limp along either high security, batten down the hatches approach to system access and exposure. They run hardened systems that won't take to new development features or operational models without a laborious effort within security teams. In the upper right is an immature dev team, very heavy ops focused or minimized or marginalized security. Organizations where it's all about running the business or keeping the lights on to support activities as they are. There's little investment into active modernization and transformation activities. Reactive utilization to security practices as well. Upper left are the well-oiled DevOps. It's an antagonistic or edge security role, an organization that is low friction for DevOps activities at the expense of security. It avoids security involvement until the release or on-demand rather than integration into the process. DevSecOps and even DevOps is still relatively new, so each organization's experience and path will be different. This is experiential learning. You will need to find your own way with doing it, best practice, and observing the failures and successes of peers. There will be some pain, but then again, this is all about teamwork, and one head is not as good as two or five or 20. There's no lift and shift for what you will work for for DevOps and DevSecOps. Yes, there are guides, how-tos, and even plenty of talks like this on how to prepare, transition, and succeed, but your business and operations are yours uniquely. There's a human element to all of this, and that's the ability to adapt to change. Humans are exceptionally great at this. We advance by running down the right and wrong roads. The adaptation is through the resiliency that's built in us humans. Our ability to use language and express and share concepts allows us to evolve faster, and in most cases, better. Not that we're infallible. I would guess for every outstanding success or plenty of failures. There are lessons learned, however, and that should give some comfort. To say we're breaking new ground might still be a misnomer here. This is almost on the level of initial space exploration, when we've been told to do things better and faster and sometimes the modicum of resources and told to spin gold thread out of lead. Each industry is trying to find their own way around on doing this, seeing what works, what it doesn't apply to past operations, and align it to the desired outcomes for the work they want to do. Matching what KPIs, measures of performance, operating models, and what will be developed possibly on the fly. It will be important to instrument that process to ensure that you can quantify process in both qualitative and quantitative measures. Some of these will be feels rather than hard and fast bankable numbers because you're dealing with the impression of people. ROI is still a fungible number in most cases as it, is easily, as it is to apply to your environment and enterprise and can't be lifted from others. We can model it from example, but it's not an obvious application of those techniques. Enjoy the journey, value your team, allow people to shine, but don't rely on a solitary genius to make all of this happen. You can only get the ball in goal if everybody works together efficiently. Thank you. Have a nice evening.